So now, five, six, seven, qualifying for Europe but missing out on the Champions League. All right, I'm going to say this with a caveat because a lot of naysayers out there are going to cry about it, whatever we both say here. But my top seven, I pr- I'm predicting to be within twelve. Just do points. Five, five, five through seven. Five, five through seven. seven. Okay, but my, my top seven will be within twelve points of each other. I, I that's just me. Don't have a problem with that. Don't okay, have a problem five, with that. five through seven. Also, oh, I go seven through five. This is hard. This is this might be the hardest year yet because there's some really good teams here. There's some teams. I'll just, I'll just say it. Number seven, Atalanta. Atalanta okay. seventh. Uh, I like what they have so far, but I'm not convinced of their defense just yet. Uh, they can play defense at times. They can play attack at times. They can't seem to marry the two uh, themes, it seems like, like other teams, like Inzaghi's teams. So they're seven. Six, and I have three points higher than Atalanta, Roma. Roma. Okay. I'm not. I think Mourinho. It's his cursed third year. I well, I well, I do like Lukaku. I do like what he's gonna do with DiBala and and Pellegrini and company. I just think the teams above them provide more, uh, make it more difficult. I'm not to say Roma's gonna have a bad year, but I think that teams above them are all, all play much better. Um, questions about the defense, like Chris Smalling, especially Rui Patricio as well. So I'm a little, I'm a little worried about that. Top five. This is this is killer for me because I'm like, who do I leave out of the top four? Um, I'm going to say, and it's been crazy because I picked them second in the preseason pick, but three points ahead of Roma, I have Juventus. Mm. Um, I was high on them in the preseason, but the moves that they made or didn't make in the preseason, plus the way they've started so far, um, it's an aging team. Yes, they lost some some pieces, but I'm not really totally convinced about this team just yet. And there's a you know, we'll, we'll see how they, with a Chesney, whether it's a Medin and and um, Petting, excuse me, and goal. I I like Juventus. I think Allegri's going to get points. I do, but I just I think the teams that are above them play a little bit better, and they can find ways to get goals and and, and come up clutch when they need to. So. Juventus is fifth for me, just out of the top four, and they have no—they have nothing else to play for this year. That's why I had them so high. This is the only thing they're playing this year. I still, I just can't, can't get them in the top four. We are a little different here. All right. Seventh, Lazio. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think the midfield is the same as the special run they went on last year. Um. I think the Champions League becomes a distraction. Um, especially in a group that they feel they probably can qualify from. Um, and uh, I just, I don't know if I can, I, 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 I still see some frailties. I think they had a nice setup here against Napoli and were desperate and had to win and got to win. Uh, but I don't know if they can consistently achieve that over the course of the season. Uh, I've got Atalanta sixth. I like him. I think Skamaka makes a huge. Di- I think Skamaka makes a huge difference. I think having Cook Miner still there is important. I think the wingbacks having a revival and playing well. Cook Miner will have a great year to this year. Yeah. So Cook Miners will probably be in our team of the season. He was in my team of the season last year. Yeah. So uh, he closed strong, and I think he's continuing that run. Yeah. Um. You know, they're getting back to playing Gasparini ball slowly but surely. But I think six. I think that they there's still enough naivete to them um, that that they can't that they're not going to be a top four side. I'm with you on fifth. I think it's Juventus. Well, I think it's dynamic to see Chiesa and, and, and Vlaovic again together in attack. Yeah. I and I never thought I would say this about Juventus ever in my lifetime, but I am worried about the defense. Okay, I'm worried that Bremer is their best defender and that their second best defender, I can't tell you who it is. Okay. Um, Danilo, I guess. <laughs> yeah, probably Danilo by default. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but when I saw how Bologna were, were, were playing around Juventus and getting around them, and Bologna, okay, I worry about what that's going to look like for Juventus against the better teams. And I think that that's going to cause them, to, even with no Europe and no distraction of that, I think they're going to fall short and land in fifth. Okay. So that leaves us with top four. Four through one. Top four. Four through one. All right. 
This is so hard. So one point ahead of Juventus in my in my prediction. Um, the just sneak in is a team that I predicted to win in the preseason. And that's Milan. I have Milan coming in fourth. Mm. I, I'm so uh, what they've done so far has been fantastic. They've been playing really well, but it's so many new pieces. Can they stay together? What will they be like when the when the going gets tough? Do they all stick together? Can Tamori keep his head straight? I don't know these things. And because of that unsuredness with, with Milan, they're playing really well at the moment, but can they keep this up for a whole season? I am not sure. And they're playing on multiple fronts. And you know they're going to try to go deep in Champions League again. Um, I am unsure of that. And, and I think they'll be content with the top four. Obviously, they want to go for Scudetto, but I think with everything that they're playing with, the, with the inexperienced possibly of, or the unfamiliarity of all these players, how they will mesh together. Will, will they all live up to the billing what they're hoping for or will they be all flubs? We'll, we'll find out. Uh, but I think Milan just get in there into the top four. <sighs> Number three, man, um, two points ahead of Milan, three points behind the champion. Uh, I'm going to say Napoli. I think Napoli and Rudy Garcia, I love what Napoli have in terms of the core. I think their downfall is Rudy Garcia. Um, can this, I want to see if he's able to have, you know, it's one thing to let your team go and, and do their own thing and, and win the games like they can. But when he sets them up tactically, this is what I, this is my big thing about him from the beginning is that tactically, can he get it done? He does some nice things offensively, but when it's going gets tough and you have to really crunch it up be you know play a team that has just as much possession as you or or be forced to defend can you figure it out can you take out the opposition's strengths i'm not convinced yet i hope i'm wrong i'm hoping wrong because napoli are or this is a fantastic team that they have losing kim is going to be huge we, we don't know what natan is going to bring to us um i like Moret. i like the i mean i like the majority of this team obviously politano will see what he can do in the season but uh, I, I think I think it's Garcia is going to be their downfall for winning a Scudetto again. I think they're going to be very tough, and I'd say within three points of the Scudetto, I think this year. So they're not it's not a big drop off, um, but I think they're just there. I, I say one point ahead of them, Lazio. Um, you're unconvinced by them. I am actually quite convinced, but not quite convinced. I convinced by them in the games where it matters. Consistency is the important thing, right? And you mentioned it. Lazio at times can be inconsistent, especially against the teams that they should be beating. When it's a big game, they seem sometimes to to get the right uh, schematic up in the game and can make it a close, tight game, get the wins. We saw Lazio had a strong finish to the season last year. They finished second themselves. Um, they got some nice piece in the offensive side. Midfield, I like the midfield. The SMS is a huge loss, no doubt about it. But bringing Kamada, I think it's going to be huge for them. Guendouzi is going to be someone they, they can rely on. Um, Castellanos, I like him. He'll be good vice to Chiri Immobile. Uh, Isaacson, as well as another player, I think is going to be a good vice player. But I think Sakani and Felipe Anderson is going to be uh, wonderful, wonderfully teamed up with Chiri Immobile. I think having Pedro and um, you and I both talked about how we like their center backs. I think Romagnola and Casale are going to build off that fantastic run they had last year. And Provadel is a fantastic goalkeeper. And so... <laughs> I, f I feel like Sa this is Saudi's year where he finally gets it all together with his team and they play more consistent. Um, and they finally play against the lower teams the way they've been playing the top teams. And I think Lazio find a way to get second. And for me, the champions are Inter. Inter is just so stacked. And it's not just because they won against Fiorentina. They are a deep team. They have multiple facets to the game that we talked about last week. They can win ugly games. They can win the blowout games. They know how to play in Europe now. I mean, obviously, you got a cup merchant in, in Zaghi. But Inter just seem like this different animal now. They play with all this confidence, and a lot of it's led by their captain, Mar Lautaro Martinez. Um, and you got now a, a added confidence, adding like guys like a Taram, adding like a Jan Sommer. People don't know who Sommer is. Sommer is a really good goalkeeper. I mean, ask anybody who – ask the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Azzurri when they played against him in, in a penalty shootout. He is a good goalkeeper. Um, and so they got a steal with him. I just love everything that Inter is doing right now, and I think Izagi is finally going to get his, his uh, Scudetto. Okay, um, well, here's my top four. Number four, Roma. I'm buying it. I think that I think the acquisitions, I think the talent, I think it comes together, and I think they make a charge. Um, I uh, if you think Juve in fifth, then FIGC will have to create <laughs> <laughs> nice. Come well, on, investigate, investigate away. So. 
I, I'm, I'm buying in on Roma. It's a sloppy start. It's an ugly start. It's not what they hoped for. Um, I think they get this figured out, and I think they get this fixed. Yes, the defending definitely concerns me if, if, if you leave those guys out in 1v1 situations. But I think that I, I, we, we, we see adjustments, and I think that hopefully, you know, Mourinho's in a place where he is obviously – he's obviously burned bridges at other places in his third season wherever he's gone. Yeah. Um, does he have – does he have the maturity to re- to learn from that? You know, history says no. He has too much of an ego that he's going to be stubborn. But I'm going to trust the talent that's there at Roma uh, to go ahead and grab fourth and be back in the Champions League next season. Dybala gets healthy. You have you have a depth of playmakers. You have a depth of wingbacks. You know, the goalkeeping and the defense is what's killing you right now. But I think that they come up with a plan uh, to account for those deficiencies if they can't completely if they can't, if they can't completely eliminate them uh, I think Napoli's third it is really really hard to repeat as a league champion especially in this league as there's been a different champion what how many times like Napoli Milan inter Juve so in the last four years there's been a different champion so I don't think they repeat I think the Defensive frailties were on display, and they were in a very, very limited sample against Lazio. You know, what what does Napoli do when a team has more possession and creates more chances? Um, you know, it's it's pretty scary. Um, at number two, I'm going with Milan. I think that what they do going forward and what they do in attack is going to be very, very difficult for the rest of the league to stop. Um, it's where they're a little naive in the back and some of the – I don't know if Roddy Krunich can keep doing what he's doing throughout the 38-game season. <laughs> he might have to if Benazir's not ready, yep. and that's scary. because And then if there is a Krunich injury or a suspension, Pioli says Adli can do it. You know, it's Musso too, possibly. Or even Musso, but can they? Um, so I have questions there. Um, so my questions with Milan are very much like my questions with, with Roma. Certain defensive situations where – where they could get exposed and 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 how do they how do they deal with it? And number one for me, I, I I'm going with Inter winning the title. I hope I'm wrong as a Milan fan, but I got to pick with my mind here. And I I just think I I think that it's only been three games, but they have won them in completely different ways. And if you're going to win a Scudetto, you have to win them in completely different ways. We need to see them deal with adversity, right? Yeah. Um, RLC did it a few times at Chelsea. Well, we'll see. You know. Um, we'll see, but let's come back to Inter. They do need to deal with some adversity. Okay. They do need to have a fixture, uh, like when they were at Spezia where they had so much of the ball and so much of the chances, but still lost to one. Yeah. And how do they get up and react from that? Or how can they deal with those situations? You know, if they've, if they've really fully, there's something to be said about the continuity of a team. Yeah. where the transfers that you bring in are uh, complementary pieces and not necessarily guys you're expecting to just take over games. Because yeah, that's, exactly. what Inter, exactly. that's what Inter needed to do. And it, it may, actually kind of made me laugh listening to a lot of Inter Twitter out there talking about how we don't want to get this guy, we're not getting this guy, we're screwed. We're, look at what Milan's doing. Like, you don't need to do any. You need guys that can complement what you have. Yeah. You know, and sometimes that's what a mercato is all about. You don't need to completely reinvent the system. You were just in the damn Champions League final and damn near beat Manchester City. Yeah. Okay. You just need pieces that you can plug in and complement what you got going on. And so far, it's off to a really, really good start. Yeah. So, and I think given Inzaghi's track record, um, you know, with how he's managed this team, okay, me and Cups, he's been much, much better. But I think this is the time that he breaks through and has a league title to go onto that resume with all of those cup victories that he has. 